It's been quite a long old journey, and uh, you summed it up pretty well there, you know, working in the factories, sleeping in my car, and of course, as you mentioned, losing an eye along the way. And yeah, I never thought it would come to this, but uh, here we are. It's almost midnight here in Los Angeles, but I'm, uh, I just got out of bed, actually. I set my alarm. It's, uh, it sounds very, very rock and roll, but uh, I'm old these days. I've got three kids. I went to bed, I set my alarm, and it's a pleasure to talk to you. Well, you look fantastic. I wish I looked like that when I'd just woken up. Um, <laughs> talk to me about how you lost your eye. Well, listen, you know, I mean, the sport I take part in, it's, uh, it, you know, it, it's a beautiful sport, but it's also very vicious. And, of course, it's mixed martial arts, so, you know, you can punch, kick, knee and elbow. And, unfortunately, I got kicked in the head of a guy down in Brazil called Vitor Belfort, who uh, was on every performance-enhancing drug under the sun. And sadly, that caused my retina to detach. I got it fixed, it re-detached, so on and so forth. Six surgeries later, and sadly, yeah, you know, I've, I've got one eye, but still, in the land of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. That's what they say. But how challenging <laughs> does it make you fighting when you've only got one eye? Because it must be such a big difference that you have to um, get used to. Yeah, just a little bit. You know, people always say to me, how did you fight with one eye? And I always say, with great difficulty. You know, obviously the depth perception is way off. In fact, it's non-existent. So it was very, very difficult. But uh, fortunately, I had some very patient coaches and, uh, you know, we, we managed to get the job done. The thing was, the hardest part was keeping it secret this whole time because obviously, you know, uh, getting licensed with one eye isn't very, very easy. So uh, I'd sell a few porky pies along the way, but still, I'm retired now. So now I can start telling the truth. And now you can tell some stories on tour. Tell us about that. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so I did a, a one-man show a couple of years ago in Toronto. And uh, if you've ever seen the Mike Tyson one-man show, Undisputed Truth, I guess it's something like that. However, I didn't squander $400 million or go to prison for rape. So uh, <laughs> it's not too similar, I guess, in that regard. But still, yeah, so I did it in Toronto and uh, everyone really enjoyed it. It was a real good laugh. And then some promoters that I got talking to, you know, they uh, they came to me with an offer and I'm uh, doing a mini tour throughout the UK. And the support was so great that actually I'm coming back next year. We're doing uh, way more dates in England. We're doing mainland Europe. We're doing Australia, New Zealand. So uh, it's kind of taken on a life of its own. But I'm very excited. Fortunately, the UFC has a really passionate fan base in the UK. And ticket sales have been tremendous. There is some still available, though. So if anyone's doing anything next week in Birmingham, London, Manchester or Glasgow, get yourself to myticket.co.uk and come along and then enjoy the fun. That's a big plug. Uh, Michael, <laughs> why, why are you in LA? Why are you not here? Uh, well, 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 the weather, believe it or not, <laughs> I do miss the rain. But uh, no, my wife's Australian and uh, the UFC predominantly, you know, it's an American sport. And I had the work visa and my wife, uh, you know, she wasn't too keen on the rain. So uh, we came out here just to do some training camps. But we've got three children and uh, one's 20, one's 19 and one's 11. And now we've been here for 10 years. Uh, it's kind of home for them. And I, I want to come back to England all the time, but my wife would never dream of leaving the kids. And uh, yeah, she, she doesn't want to go back to the rain. So I miss it dearly, but uh, it is what it is.